So if you're wondering how the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V stacks up against the most popular flagships in mid 2023, you're in the right place. In this video, it's the Xperia 1 Mark V versus the Galaxy S23 Ultra versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I am gonna focus mainly on the Xperia because that's the newest device and there's tons of iPhone versus Samsung videos out there. So I don't wanna make just another one of those. And something you need to keep in mind throughout this video is the Sony is using a brand new sensor type, a stacked sensor. They call it the Exmor T. And also the Sony has Zeiss lens coatings, whereas the other two have unbranded coatings. I do believe the Galaxy S23 uses a glass module in there, so that might come into play when it comes to lens flares and ghosting and all that kind of stuff. So keep an eye on that throughout the video. And another thing to keep an eye out for is in some of the photos, I'm gonna be using the Photo Pro app on the Sony device. And in others, I'm just using the Auto. And I'll add this little overlay here so you know which photo was shot using which method. So this photo was shot manually on the Xperia 1 Mark 5 and auto on the S23 and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. It's kind of like a man versus machine test and you can see a clear difference between the iPhone and the S23. The iPhone's picture is very contrasty with darker areas being slightly crushed and as a result, you lose a little bit of the details in the darker areas of the photo. The Samsung offers a much brighter, more vivid image that's kind of their style with all the shadows lifted and you can really see that on the grass. It kind of illuminates the grass quite a bit. Now with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, I had to spend quite a bit of time dialing in the white balance using that 4K OLED HDR screen with the creator mode on to try and match the colors with what my eyes could see. I kept the ISO as low as possible to reduce any kind of noise. And because it was quite bright, I really had to ramp up the shutter speed to control the exposure. And from my point of view at that particular moment, I do believe it's the most accurate photo, but that's probably because I invested so much time in getting it. So let me know what you think. And a good test here is if you close your eyes and open them again, which one instantly draws you in? Let me know in the comments. Now picture two. Okay, here is Native American Bill Murray. In this one, I used the Xperia 1 Mark 5's basic camera app. And I think you'll agree, the basic camera app seems to have massively overexposed this image. And I'm not 100% sure why this happened, but if I was to guess, it's probably because the Xperia 1 Mark 5 is using a center weighted average when it comes to reading the exposure. And because this native Indian is painted black, the overall measurement of the brightness will be much lower. And because of that, it's brightening up to balance it out. And just to simplify that, because it's a very dark photo in the center, it thinks it's a dark scene, so it's turning up the exposure. Anyway, you can see the S23 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max photos look a lot better and more lifelike. Again, the iPhone is delivering a more contrasty picture, arguably more detail in the foreground, and the S22 Ultra, a more vivid image. Both are very good. And I have to say, if I were to pick one out of the two, I'd say the S23 wins this one. It just has a more realistic tone to it. Now, of course, I had to do a manual photo of this with the Xperia 1 Mark V just to see that it is capable of delivering as good or better picture than these other two. And I did get photo bombed by the dog in the process. But again, I had to spend quite a bit of time to match the colors with the manual white balance. And it was very sunny that day, which is unusual for England, but it was. So I had to increase the shutter speed to the point where the highlights reflecting off the Bill Murray matched up to what my eyes could see because it was actually very bright. And those kind of lighter areas did have this kind of light reflection off of it, which you're not seeing that much in the other two. And again, let me know if you took a glance at this, which one looks the best and why. And now picture three. So this one's kind of a color saturation test. Sometimes with phones, they overdo it with saturation and things start to blur together. So I just wanted to see how these three phones handle. And there was a slight breeze. And I didn't realize until I put these on a computer that the iPhone completely missed the focus on the flower I was trying to take the photo of. It seems to have locked onto the flower behind. And I've noticed this with the iPhone at times when it's at that point where it switches between the primary lens and the macro lens, and it keeps switching back and forwards, it can often get confused as to what the focal point is because it's shifting between two lenses which are in two different spots on the back of the device. Anyway, I apologize for this one. I should have spent a bit more time manually trying to get this right. But Anyway, the S23 does a great job and is tack sharp. The colors have a lot of pop and that's kind of Samsung's style. This is what they do. They turn up the vibrant colors, which makes the photos look really appealing and eye-catching straight out of camera. And on the Sony, I used the basic camera mode. And I think this time it's done a great job nailing focus and colors in comparison to the other two. It might look a bit more muted, but in real life it is more realistic because the roses are actually pink and not red. And they do look kind of more red in the other two photos. Okay, here's the landscape ultra wide. Again, the iPhone is very contrasty. You can really see that in the clouds, the sort of dark parts of the clouds. The S23 Ultra, very bright, very vibrant. That's their style, as you know. And on Xperia 1 Mark 5, 
I manually set the white balance and I used the blue sky and the green grass as reference points and tried to dial those two colors in perfectly so they match what I could see. So I do believe those two colors at least are very accurate. Let me know what you think of the three photos, which one looks the best. And now let's do a little 4K 60 frames per second test at sundown. So you'll notice the Xperia 1 Mark 5 is quite a bit darker than the other two. And the reason for this is because I set the shutter speed to double the frame rate that I'm shooting at. So the frame rate is 60 frames per second. The shutter speed was locked in at 120 frames per second. And this is what caused the darkness. Had I have left the shutter speed on auto, it might have slowed down a bit to brighten the scene up. But the reason you're seeing better video on the iPhone and the S23 Ultra is because everything is auto. So long story short, it's kind of my fault why the Xperia looks very dark here. And these are the kind of errors you can make when you take the controls into your own hands. But it's important to know when you use the camera correctly on Xperia 1 Mark 5, the results can be a lot better than this. So don't judge it just for this one. Just learn from this and know what not to do. <laughs> Okay, so you know, at some point, you might want to take some photos of your food. And what could be a better test for the cameras than a Five Guys burger? Now, interestingly, the iPhone seems to have underexposed the photo and it has a kind of greenish tint. Maybe this is due to the bright reflections coming off the tinfoil, which is kind of throwing off the AI. That's the only explanation I could think of. The details are good on the bun, but a little bit soft in the foreground. The S23 Ultra really shines here. The details are great everywhere. The image is exposed perfectly and it's making me really hungry. <laughs> 
And with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, once again, I dialed in the settings with the ISO, the shutter speed and the white balance, and really tried my best to match the colors again by literally holding the phone side by side with the burger. <laughs> So what do you think? Which one looks the best here? Which one looks the tastiest? Which one looks the most realistic? And now it's time for the night showdown. Okay, so all three phones have really good image sensors and all of them I believe are Sony sensors too. The difference is the sensor types. So the new Exmor T sensor is this kind of stacked sensor, which is a brand new one from Sony. I wouldn't be surprised if next year all of the flagships are rocking this type of sensor. It is possible. But something else that comes into play is of course the optics and the image signal processing from the processor inside the phone. All phones were shooting on auto mode here, and I think at a glance, the iPhone takes the victory in this particular shot. However, I did do a Photo Pro manual exposure on Xperia 1 Mark V, and you can see the improvement is pretty significant. Look how it's picked out the stars in the night sky, where the other two phones haven't really picked them up and they've kind of really smoothed over that area in the noise reduction process. Okay, here's another shot all on auto and I must say the Xperia 1 Mark 5's night mode has come a long way. It's the best we've ever seen from Sony on the basic camera app. In fact, it's probably the brightest of the three and this particular scene is very dark. In fact, the darkest in this video. So I'm very impressed with this and I do believe it comes down to the new sensor. The Samsung seems to have struggled a little bit here and the Xperia and the iPhone are quite similar, but with the difference being the iPhone's AI, again, has denoised the sky quite a bit and it appears very smooth, which is actually really nice to the eye. You don't see so much of that smoothing on the Sony. Okay, so I went Photo Pro on Xperia 1 in this one. And you know what? All three phones deliver a very similar result and the details are great on all three. And that red light at the center of the photo can often cause flares and ghosting and all kinds of stuff in this particular shot. I've taken this photo several times, but all three phones actually handle it very well. Of course, I had to spend quite a bit more time dialing in the white balance. So I'm naturally inclined to say the colors are more accurate on the Sony, but that's because again, I invested more time into that photo and making sure it is as accurate to what I could see as possible. But if you step away from that fact and you look at all three of these photos side by side, which one looks the best to you? I'm very interested to know, so leave a comment. So this photo is another one that I take in pretty much all my camera comparisons now. And it's a very challenging one. The camera AI probably doesn't know if it's a night scene or an indoor scene, and it's hard for the phone to figure out where to measure the exposure from. The S22 Ultra and the iPhone are both on auto mode, but I dialed in manually the exposure on Xperia to try and compensate for the bright lights in the scene, and I did shoot this one in RAW. And you can see the Galaxy turns night into day with its AI. The iPhone looks Instagram worthy without any filters, and the Xperia, when I look at it and I see the color on my jeans, I know the colors are spot on, and I'm very impressed with my own ability here to have dialed the white balance in correctly. But because I did a longer exposure, maybe there's a bit of softness around my face. And of course I could do some post-processing to sharpen that part of the image up if I wanted to, which is what AI will typically do straight out of camera in most phones. And because I shot this in RAW, I thought, well, might as well throw this in Lightroom and see how high I can push the highlights, how low I can bring the shadows without the image completely falling apart. Check this out. The Xperia can also turn night into day. And it's because that image sensor is so powerful, it can capture so much detail in the blink of an eye. So you know, as I was sitting there on the stairway, it got me thinking about new image sensors and what they could be like in the future and astrophotography and how I forgot to do that in this video. Also, I was thinking about that song, Stairway to Heaven and the timeless forbidden riff. And if you can imagine that one day using sensor tech, humans might find another habitable planet better than this one cleaner air, cleaner water, no war, no adverts. And one day when that happens, you might actually be able to buy a stairway to heaven in the form of a SpaceX ticket most likely, but yeah, you get where I'm going with this. Anyway, appreciate you guys for watching this one. Let me know what you thought of the results. If there's anything I missed or failed to test in this video, let me know in the comments. I'll try and add it in the next one. Appreciate you guys for watching. See you in the next one. Don't be late.